was the big winner of the $25,000 top prize. Two years later, Akron, Ohio was once again the focus of attention when Jack DeAndalillo bowled the first 300 game in a championship round. It was a $10,000 payday. Nine years later, the stakes have grown dramatically. Earl Anthony had a chance for a $200,000 bonus, but fate was not on his side. The past two weeks, we've seen the sum of $100,000 on the minds of both Mike Durbin and also Marshall Holman, who saw their chances spoiled in each case by a single tenth. And in each case, the string ending at nine in a row. However, today in Miami begins a different kind of search for perfection by the country's top pros. If this afternoon's winner also wins tournaments later this winter in Cleveland and Milwaukee, he will win $1 million. Today is the first step. ABC Sports presents... Live, it's the 24th season of the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, we're in the house that Don built. Don Carter, that is, the man whose legendary style and accomplishments earned him the title as the greatest bowler of all time. In our first match today will be the number five bowler, Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas. Only a year ago, he was thinking of retirement from the tour. Today, he's thinking of winning. He'll face the number four bowler, considered by many on the tour to be on the verge of a great career, seeking his first win from St. Louis, Steve Wonderlich. The number three bowler has had the hot hand lately. The winner two weeks ago in Las Vegas, also from St. Louis, Pete Weber. The number two player is a two-time champion from Tacoma, Washington, Brian Voss. And the tournament leader is a former champion here in Miami, the holder of 14 PBA titles from Indianapolis, Wayne Webb. Now we're inside the Don Carter with me, the greatest bowler of all times, and he is the host here at the $150,000 Light Classic. Don, what do you see in the lane conditions change between the 1980s and back in the 1950s? Well, uh, boy, I think the urethane finish today has made a world of difference. Today, uh, they have to crank the ball. You see the big rotation on the ball, and then it was a track shot where you threw more or less down and had the ball break a little. Today, that shot wouldn't do too well. And then the bowling equipment today is much different. You have the urethane bowling balls that tear the pins up. So there's a big difference. How about the talent? Compare the talent of, say, the kids we see in the 1980s back to the 40s and 50s. Well, I think that's difficult. You have so many more great bowlers today than we had. Uh, there's a lot of them out here now. There's 150 of them could win the tournament. Back 20 years ago, you know, you had to beat eight or ten guys to win the tournament. So there are many, many great bowlers today, and we didn't have that many. We didn't have any money today. They're shooting for a lot of money. Well, thank you, Don. In one moment, Chris, they'll be starting, and the winner today has a chance to win $1 million. Ready to go. All right, the handshake, Mark Williams on the right. He'll shoot first. He's a 27-year-old from Beaumont, Texas, going against 26-year-old Steve Wunderlich, St. Louis, Missouri. Here's a man with one title, six years, wanted to quit last year, but thankfully he didn't. And a high hit, and that often happens on a first shot. And would you believe, he left the 310, the baby split. Mark Williams, his wife Carol is here today, along with his mother. So he has an in-person cheering section of his own. Steve Wunderlich, winner to meet Pete Weber. So it's uh, an unfortunate open frame for Mark Williams who did have a high game during the 42-game competition of 295. Bo Burton had a 289 and led after the first round here in this championship, but wound up 22nd. Still proud of you, Bo. Pretty good week for me, Chris. And here's yeah. a player that has been out on the tour for six years, but I think he's really coming into his own. Watch this style and determination. And Bo, your protege, that one get, sort of got away from him, didn't it? From the start. Well, the characteristic of the championship here is showing up in the first two shots. We're bowling at 13 and 14 here at Don Carter Lane's, a 72 lane bowling center. The right hand lane, 14, is much slicker. The ball will not bite or hook into the pocket, as happened to Wonderlich. The left hand lane hooks a lot more, and we saw Williams go high and leave a split. It's the player who can adjust his shot, speed, and angle that will be the winner today. Tried oh so hard, and well, we have open frames, 
for both professionals here in our very first game. And as we said, the winner will meet the leading money winner of this year, Pete Weber of St. Louis. This man's from St. Louis, and why he hasn't won a championship in the six years, it's just hard to believe because he has so much talent, so much determination. But once he wins that first one, look out. Good athlete. He was a high school baseball player, excellent hitter, played third base at Parkway Central High School in St. Louis, which is in West County, but opted for bowling. Look at the outside line. I like that a little better, although he left the 10 pin. A lesson to be learned from Wonderlich's shot. Look out on the very first board on the left-hand lane, the hooks. He saws the five out, drives it in the seven, the six plays down in the channel, and leaves the soft ten. But his game plan, Chris, is to play the gutter shot or the outside line on the left lane because it hooks, and to play the inside line or straight towards the pocket on the right-hand lane. He could be very tough if he gets cooking. And he lost it, and unfortunately, back-to-back -back open frames for Steve Wonderlich. For years, this man has had one Achilles heel, and that's the 10 pin, and it's psychological. He has a good talent to make everything else. I just want to see how he recovers from this. He's given Mark Baker, or Mark Williams, an opening right here with two opens. Well, let's see if he can get the first mark today. And a uh, man in the symphony of desert tones, his attire, and his flaming red hair. Well, he'd like to win that $27,000 first prize. Runner up 14, 8,500 third, 7,000 fourth. The loser of this match you're watching right now will get a check for $6,000. So here is the man that, if he can double, increase it to 21 pins over Steve Wunderlich. Well, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a, an expression today. The 2 8 10, Chris. The ball is out here, and it breaks very late. Driving the head pin to the sideboard, it takes out the 4, 7, and 8. But watch the action over in the right-hand corner. There's the head pin. Goes out there and leaves the 2 8 10. What he has to do is throw very hard at the 2 8 and try to bounce it around. No, he's just going for 2. It's a very controlled, not high-speed shot. And uh, now he, after opening in the first, strike in the second, has an open in the third. One pin lead by this man, Wonderlich. Now he's in the third. Let's see if he can get his first strike right here. Watch his line. Well, left the 2-4 on that shot. Look at the profile of Steve. Just an ideal all-around style, Chris. The five-step delivery, good locked arm swing. Watch the left side. Look at that left hand up in the air, balancing the right side. Shoulder high swing, straight through the shot. Good wrist action. On this case, Wonderlick is playing just a little light on the right-hand lane. Very tight first match. Wonderlick, who last year, and as we said, has not won a championship yet. Even though he didn't win last year, he earned 56000 261, which uh, is credit to his talent because he's consistent. He um, placed in the top five twice last year, was third at the True Value Open in Peoria. Wonderlich using a urethane bowling ball, semi-fingertip grip. Even though it's an extremely high hit, now that should loosen him up. Steve Wonderlich. His first strike at four frames, a very close first match as you see. More of it after this. I don't compete anymore, but I still pump iron. So after lifting a few hundred pounds, it's nice to lift one of these. Light beer for Miller. Light tastes great, and it's less filling with a third less calories than the regular beer. Chips and the women's world downhill bow. That's from uh, the downhill from over in Europe and the skating championships are from my home state in Missouri, Chris. So a lot of action, a lot of cold weather, and I'm sure everybody will enjoy that. But we're back to the hot action right here. Mark Williams trails by one, fourth frame. And Mark gets his second strike. Earlier we talked about the turning point of his career, which convinced him to stay on the tour. Well, uh... Last spring, I started bowling better, started catching more consistently. Uh, during the summer, I 
just having a tough week in Waukegan. All of a sudden, the second day of qualifying, things turned around. I made the finals, ended up winning the tournament. Uh, it held my confidence a lot. I've always practiced anywhere from 100 to 200 games a week, uh, bowl as much as I can. Got married in the last year, and uh, things are just going great for me. And his wife, Carol, is here. She watches along with you, hoping to double. And her husband leaves at 6'10". There's Carol. She's cute. Cute lady. The power of positive thinking. Mark Williams really ne never made any changes in his game, Chris. And uh, he won that tournament in Waukegan, which is on our summer tour. The PBA mm -hmm. consists of the winter tour here on ABC, a summer tour, and then a fall tour. Seven tournaments in the fall of the year. So Mark won on the summer. All right. Now back up in his blue and white, the Wonderlick. Mentioned third in the True Value last year. And he was fourth in the Fairlanes Open in Hyattsville. Nine and nine is his record in nine television appearances. Six footer, 170 pounds. Strike up. And he leads by 11. Good comeback by Steve Wunderlich, who had back-to-back -back opens. Look at the action of Steve Wunderlich's ball. He drives in from the outside line. He switched the outside line on the right-hand lane, drives into the one, three. The ball takes out the five and the nine. Look at this. One, three, five, nine. Mm -hmm. Wunderlich has moved to the outside line on both lanes. He practiced both, both angles. Look where he's standing. He'll lay the ball down the first or second board, try to hold it wide, then snap it very sharply at the back end. And it works. That is a shot for the faint, not a shot for the faint-hearted. As we look at Sunday, his wife, who usually charts his game. And I think she just made a mark on that chart. It simply says he threw a strike and the move he made on the lane. Uh, Will Belly said a little more as we go on, Chris. It's very important for the pros to have somebody chart their shots. And it's important that Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas, start striking. crossover leaving the nine this is our first match the winner to meet colorful Pete Weber Mark Williams a hot and cold bowler Chris when he really turns it on he's red hot when he won his first title he beat his best friend Peter McCordick on television 257 to 157 and a couple of weeks ago in a PBA regional tournament that's a satellite tournament uh, he lost a 279 to 290 to his little buddy Pete Ooh, McCordick. it just came up 42 games in order to get to this point. And look at that first round leader. Nelson Burton Jr., Gary Skidmore, Mark Williams, whom you're looking at now, Brian Voss, whom you'll see later, and Wayne Webb. Came on strong to be the tournament leader today. The grip of Mark Williams. We said that Wonderlick uses a semi-fingertip grip. Williams uses the fingertip grip, where the fingers are inserted just to the first knuckle. Good shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And a seven pin for the Texan. Throws that very strong ball. Watch the ball enter the one three and drive the five. Instead of going into the eight, goes right back, misses the seven. These are three pound, six ounce, and three pound, seven ounce pins that the pros are using today. Remember the minimum weights are three pound, two ounces, the maximum three pound, ten ounces. These are just in between. Look out. Look out. Twice now. Fair ball has found a channel won by each of the professionals just slides by he points the ball right at the seven pin and goes in the left channel Chris he's having trouble with his arm swing he's lost it he needs to get a little break right now Williams is trailing by 34 pins I know we're looking at now and Mark Williams wonder if in the lead by 34 can up it because he has a three bagger working mm. Leaving a two pin. Wonderlick goes wide and leaves the two pin. Now his wife will chart every shot that he throws on a sheet of paper, and she'll mark on there the two pin. Now here's a chart similar. To, this is the one he had in the last eight games last night. You can see his opponents on the left, his strikes and spares. You can see those little boxes. Those are the pins that he left up in any particular frame. There's his wife, Cindy, who is charting his match right now against Mark Williams. If he wins this, he'll make adjustments off that against him in the next match. All right, it's a spare. Well, Wonderlich, we asked him earlier why he chooses to travel a tour in a motor home. I do it for two reasons. Uh, first of all, being expensive, 
to stay in a hotel and eat three meals a day in restaurants just to be pretty expensive where in a trailer you can eat at home and you don't have to pay that hotel bill every day. The second reason is convenience. Uh, the fact that we don't have to pack and unpack every week and we have a real home-like feeling because of we have the same residents every week creates a better atmosphere for me to bowl under. Well explained, Steve, and he left the three six. And of course, Bo, that keeps the economy in my area of northern Indiana going, <laughs> recreational vehicles. That's <laughs> right, in Elkhart, Indiana. I know I've been through that town. Here he leaves the three six bear. The only guard he has to watch is the sharp break to chop the three off the six. Warner Lake will kill the shot, try to drive the three six straight back. Excellent. And Bo, there are quite a few bowlers that don't use necessarily automobiles or uh, airlines. They have the mobile home. It's convenient. Chris, about 25% of the touring pros use a motorhome or some sort of convenience vehicle to live in. There's 80 touring pros out here every week, so usually you can see 20 to 25 parked behind the bowling center. It's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Well, left the 10 pin for Mark Williams, the man who has won one title. This is his sixth year, a member of the Professional Bowlers Association. And Bo, how many members now do you have in the PBA? Chris, counting uh, touring pros, about 140 touring pros and about 2,900 members around the country. A big association. Let's uh, have a replay on Mark Williams' profile. Has a nice push away, a good short swing, but watch, he pulls his arm away from his body. There it goes out, away from his body. And this is where he has his problems, Chris, when he gets a little out of time, as you see today. Has a good finish on the ball. This particular shot was the 10 pin, it was a good shot. Right now for Mark Williams, who trails by 31 pins, has to get striking if he wants to win this game. Another 10 pin for one of the 143 right-handers in the field of 160. Williams has the ball way out here, and it breaks late. Now watch the key pins. This is a six pin right here as it lays down in the channel. Now watch it as the ball drives through. See the ball finishing late. See that six pin lay down in the channel. If it was a little more solid up higher into the pocket, he would have carried the 10. Good job. Just pissed it off the back. And now Steve Wonderlich. Making that bowling ball even more gleaming. Studying the approach, Chris. He's counting the boards to the right that he has to move. Remember, there's only five dots on these approaches, so he has to count very meticulously how wide his feet are. Look at that. All right, he's on the exact board. Now he has moved to the right. Oh, he's trying the inside line. Yeah. Inverted the split, leaving the 6-10. Wonderlich, and he's checking it again. Wonderlich, an experienced player, is really showing it, Chris, to explain to people exactly what he's doing. He thinks the inside line on the right-hand lane is the best shot if he's going all the way. Remember, he has to win four games. He's got this match well in hand. It's almost impossible to blow it. He tried an experimental shot inside again, sees, uh, trying to see how it works. I'm sure he'll stay outside on the left-hand lane. Cross lane shot, just getting the six. Wonderlich, remember the winner will meet Pete Weber, and then looking ahead, Brian Voss of Tacoma, Washington, and then the tournament leader, Wayne Webb. 27,000 to the winner, and it's the first step of a three package tournament. If the same person can win all three, one million dollars. This victory here in the first match is, uh, I have to give, put it down as a cerebral victory for Wonderland. That was absolutely a beautiful shot. Best of the day thus far. So Steve Wonderlich has won this first match and we'll give you the final scores when we come back. It'll be Wonderlich going against another St. Louis man. Woo! That after this. Live coverage of the fifth stop of the Professional Bowlers Tour, our 24th season. And now we have an all St. Louis match coming up as Steve Wonderlich of that fine city defeated Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas, 193 to 171, four strikes. And now on the left, that's 22-year-old Pete Weber, who won in Las Vegas as a leading money winner. So, like old days, Nelson, all St. Louis right here. Old days, but the names have changed a little bit. It used yeah. to be a, another Weber, and sometimes a Burton out there or a Blues. A lot of great players from St. Louis. Two of the 
greatest stars to come out of the St. Louis in the last 10 years. Right here, heads up. You know, we have to give a lot of credit to Steve Wunderlich. He opened with a strike here in the second game. Remember, he had back-to-back -back open frames in his first match victory. Pete Weber qualified third for this championship round. And this is a young man that's been a pro six years, has won five titles, and already $366,295. There he is. Five seven hundred thirty five pounds. And we have a two sleeper eight. The characteristics the right of, the, of the right lane, Chris, then uh, note that both of these players are still league bowlers. They're touring pros, make their living full time bowling out here in the tour, but they still find time to go home and bowl in league, although they're on separate teams. The uh, the Weber family constitutes Weber's team and Steve's is matched with some of the excellent players of the amateurs in the St. Louis area. He made sure the man with the big arc, the high backswing. So let's take a look at a profile view of Pete. Here's a way to overcome being a light, not so strong, or not, I don't say weak, but not so strong a player is with your arm swing and the power of, of your body. Look at how that arm swing comes almost parallel or perpendicular with the full Chris. And then he drives right on through. Now watch his right step there. As he pivots through, gets a good knee bend, the sharp wrist action. For a little guy, that's the way to do it. That high back swing is the only way you can get the speed and power necessary to bowl on today's lanes conditions. And Bo, I think, as we say in boxing, pound for pound, there's none better, right? I agree. Pete Weber is... Uh, just the, almost a mirror of his father with the power that his father had 15, 20 years ago, and Pete's carrying on his tradition. Now, here's a key shot on the whole show, Chris. Mm -hmm. Wonderlich has got the left lane zeroed. He's a disciplined player. If he can find the line here on the right-hand lane, he could be very, very tough for all the opponents. Strike up. High hit again, leaving the 6-10. He expects that ball to hold or just settle there as we see his strategy this is what he told me he was going to do before we went on the air I'm going to play the outside line let the lanes get slick like the right hand lane is doing and he's going to move between the second and third arrows he's following his game plan remember he still has an alternative method on the right hand lane to jump to the outside line which helped him win the first match the ability to change the professional <laughs> All right, he had three open frames in that first victory, 193 to 171, over Mark Williams. Now he started with a strike, Mark with a spare in the second. He'll be shooting in the third as he qualified fourth for this championship round. Again, we repeat, 42 tough games in order to get in the final field of five. That's an ordeal, Nelson, 42. Way outside and in uh, the 2 8 10. The disastrous shot. That's the reason they don't like to play outside line. The ball hangs too far outside. Then it breaks very late. We saw the 2 8 10 or 2 8 10 combination the first match with Mark Baker. He was playing that extreme outside line. That's the penalty. Here you go. Watch this shot. He's looking at the first or second board. A good arm swing. We see it hanging right out by the channel. It breaks too late. Almost impossible spare. So the nemesis of all bowlers, open frame. And there, of course, is Steve's wife, Cindy, continuing to chart his progress. So with an open frame now, Weber in a 14-pin lead. He can up at 10 more. Third frame now. all the way back to St. Louis on the approach. <laughs> 17 feet of the approach. Lost a little more. A double. And there is D.D. Weber. Parents of one expecting another. Good news. Watch the power. Now here's the key pin to watch. Watch this five pin in the center as it goes over to the left and does the damage on the left side. Here comes the ball into the one three. Now watch it ball it hits the one and the three. Now here's the power. Here's why you throw a hook ball. See that five drive straight into the eight. The action of the two four taking out the seven. Unbelievable. This young man has as much power as anybody in the world, Chris, and he has it under control right now. 
He has a 24 pin lead. Double working from extend to 34 with another strike. Broadway, nightclubs, yes. And host for Make That Spare for Five Years, Johnny Johnston. Doesn't he look great? And the husband of Catherine Grayson, the one-time great movie star. What a great guy, Johnny Johnston. He could do it all. Once fought Sugar Ray Robinson in a sparring <laughs> match. Great athlete. Here's Wonderlick trailing by 34, fourth frame. to come back. Averted that baby split, left only the three pin. Steve Wunderlich, and if you just joined us, he did win the first match over Mark Williams, 193 to 171. This is the second game. Career average in the championship round for nine appearances, 216.8. That's pretty good. You're going to win a lot of tournaments if you can just keep that up. He stuck a little at the line. That helped the fact that he missed the, missed the pin. Disconcerting. To miss a single pin like this is almost inexcusable, Chris. He just flies by the three pin. A big mistake by Wunderlich. Right now, Weber has Wunderlich almost by the throat in the early going of the match. 45 pins. Wunderlich's just got to cut it loose. He used to be a power player. Now he's more of a stroker. I think right now he has to revert back to the power and just hope he can get a lot of strikes. He cranked that one. And what happened? Uh, 7-10. You see, you see a lot of capricious leaves out here on the PBA Tour, and it's simply caused, Chris, by the type of lane condition we bowl out here. We're bowling on a urethane surface, and we have what we call short oil, where it's very slick in the front and very dry in the back, and that causes that type of hit very often. Dave Wunderlich, 26-year-old from St. Louis, having his problems here. Second match. Had them in the first two opens to start, but came back. Four strikes to win it, 193 to 171. Now, Pete Weber, second championship round appearance here in 1985, winning in Las Vegas. Three in a row, fifth frame. He may be the man to beat today the way he's bowling here in his first match. More action following this. Well, the credit goes to I've been bowling well since last uh, August. Um, I practiced a little bit in December. I came out, I started bowling well, had a few problems in Las Vegas with fast feet. Uh, found out I was going to be a father again, and I'm just ready to win. Okay. There will be more action after that. The, the question was we, what he attributes to his great start here in 85. Boy, count him. Young man that did some rehabilitating. Had some problems. Got rid of them. Drugs and alcohol, and we're very proud that he did. Wunderlich in a whole world of trouble. Trailing by 76 pins. Leaving the 6-10. Still charting. Well, I'll tell you, she won't give up. Wunderlich in trouble here. The ball crossing over in this area over the one, two. He keeps having trouble with this left-hand lane. He keeps trying to point that ball up to the pocket. Once again, I says we have what we call a head belly condition out here on the tour. You can't point the ball up and hope to have it hold. Chris, the greatest margin of victory ever on the PBA Tour was uh, 126 pins in 1984. That's our good buddy and statistician Mike Durbin defeated uh, another man we just mentioned, Larry Lobb, who's working in the truck. Mm -hmm. 153 to 279, a 120 spin differential. There's a possibility that could happen in this match if Wonderlich doesn't get cooking. Mike won last week, as you know. He's our statistician today. But he's in the 90th positions here at Don Carter's Kendall Lanes. And it's a 10-10 for Steve Wunderlich. What is happening? We know it on the tour, and it's a word that I think people at home that watch should know. It's called oil carry-down. There's a heavy concentration of conditioner in the first 10 to 12 feet of the lane. It's normally pretty dry until they practice and carry it down the lane. Then it becomes very difficult to control the ball. Just get it. So, Pete Weber up next. We'll be leaving live action for a 
say, Pete Weber, whom you're looking, had a strike in the sixth frame, or rather, uh, in the seventh frame. Tracing his string to six, then he left the 10-10 in the eighth, and as you just saw, he covered it to mark with a spare in frame number eight, and he has an 86-10 lead over this man, Steve Wunderlich. wonder why we leave live action it's because we're running behind time and that usually happens when we have a lot of open frames when we have a lot of spares and such is the case today so to keep within our time frame we do that and uh, hopefully we keep you up to date when we come back this sort of a walk away for Pete Weber here in the second game and there is a double See, he keeps trying. That's, that's a wonderful trait. And he keeps learning, Chris. He, he's going to be there many, many more times. He wants to figure out what has gone wrong. Now, he hasn't had much trouble on the left-hand lane. He's trying to figure out what to do on the right-hand lane. But Pete Weber's got the secret. And that secret today is just power. As we call it on the tour, just saw it, crank it up, do whatever you want. There it is. There's a maximum crank. Now, watch his ball. See, it'll come back instead of flying by mm -hmm. for a washout where the more line or down and in conventional shot of Wonderlicks will slide by from that position. Then when he starts it up, it crosses over the Brooklyn. It's almost a no-win situation for Wonderlick. We're down to three power players now. It's going to be Voss, Weber, and remember our tournament leader is Wayne Webb. All right. Speed Weber, who in 83 finished third at the Bird Ball here in the Miami area, will meet Brian Voss of Tacoma, Washington. Back to Classic in Miami. Beautiful day outside, and great tournament thus far for Pete Weber. Look at this score. Pete Weber going against Steve Wunderlich, who had won the first match, shot a 232 to Wunderlich's 145, earning him the right to meet Brian Voss of Tacoma, Washington, in our semifinal or third match. They're practicing now, and they've practiced for a long time. The results you'll see in Kansas City today. Ladies figure skating, United States national championships there. It's always exciting, it's always beautiful. And the same is true from Bormio, Italy, the Women's Downhill World Championship. So it's a two parts. It's a great wide world of sports following next. Okay, let's get to know Florida. Pete Weber had a six bagger, helping him to a 232 to 145 victory over Steve Wunderlich in the second match. Wunderlich had won the first game 191 to 173 over Mark Williams. Now Weber here in the semifinal will go against Tacoma's Brian Boss. In two matches, Chris, 10 open frames. The record is 19, and the players are averaging a dismal 185. Good weather. Very, very serious. His ability to concentrate now in his 22nd year is phenomenal. So we're getting our first look now. It's 5 foot 10 inch, 160 pound. Brian Voss. He's been on the tour six years. This is his first appearance in the championship round on ABC. Well, the 2 4 10 will be a real challenge now for Voss. We've seen the right hand lane. It slides. And look at the ball. Slide, slide, slide. Keeps going. That oil has carried down there, Chris. What we mean, they put mm -hmm. a heavy concentration in the first 10 or 12 feet of the lane. And as, the sh as any bowling goes on in the pro, pro, pro Tour, as you see his grip, he uses the fingertip grip. The oil will carry down. It makes it very difficult for the players to handle that back in and control the ball. He's going for it. So, like so often today, they start with open. Here's his style profile replay. Brian Voss, excellent talent. He takes a four-step delivery. See, he pushes that ball out just as he takes his first step, and he keeps that chin up. Look at that chin up and that left side balancing the right. Good straight arm swing, nice knee bend, follow through. Just did not get enough hook on that particular shot to avoid the split. Second frame, he trails by 11. Very upright bowler has left the 310 on the left lane. Mm. Cuts right through the heart, the 310. This is very much like the start Mark Williams had in the first match against Wonderlick. He started with a two opens. If Boss does not convert this, he will have a dismal 18 in the two first two frames and give Weber a tremendous start. 
And gets the conversion in a different way. Well, next week, we move to Venice, Florida for the $200,000 Bowling Proprietors United States Open. Then the Angle Open from Bo's hometown, St. Louis, on the Peoria for the True Value Open, followed by the Light Beer Open, North Olmstead, Ohio. So ball goes down into the channel to get rid of the one pin. Good shot, Brian Voss. <laughs> Watch this shot. Three pound, six ounce pins. The two three pins head directly on, bounces off the kickback, which is 29 inches away, and bounces out, gets the 10. He got a great break to avoid a second open frame. Whoever, though, is in the driver's seat, he's tuned in. He has the power, the hook ball, enough to handle these lanes by sending it wide and snapping it very sharply at the back end. Bo, I liked your tip. Help us skinny guys to get that hook. Well, this guy does it as well as anybody. Pete he? Weber going for a 21-pin lead. Come on. Gorgeous. And I'm sure they're hollering Pete in the background. <laughs> There's a lot of fans wherever he goes. If you're a small guy and you want to maximize your power, here's the way to do it. Five-step delivery, but watch the good push away. Now watch the elevated backswing as he gets up perpendicular with the approach. And the good knee bend starts right here. He pivots through. Now watch the wrist action. Tremendous turn, tremendous revolutions on the ball, and yet it hooks very little. It just kind of sets right there in the pocket, and yet when he's wide, it comes back. And uh, left only the two pin on the left lane. Pete Weber, who is, well, he's addicted to watching hockey. He loves it. I don't blame him. So do I. St. Louis Blues fan as Brian Voss tries to get a game plan together to challenge Pete Weber. Good job by Pete continuing to mark here in the third game of our telecast. And we mentioned the Bowling Proprietors United States Open. Oh, that's a $200,000 event. The first jewel in the Triple Crown and the players will leave right here in Miami and go over there. And then we go on to the AMF Angle in St. Louis and on off to Peoria for the True Value and then over to the second in the Light Beer Slam. The player who wins this will have a chance to win $1 million if you win that one in the final Miller Tournament. After a 310 conversion, Brian Voss comes up with another split, the 2 4 10. We've seen this many times. The ball's right here, and only Weber has enough hook to get it into the pocket. His Brian Voss ball slides by. Watch the action of the head pin as it goes to the sideboard. The ball will not finish enough to avoid the split. Voss cannot make that. This will be the 12th open frame in just two and a half games. Back to back conversion. What a shooter. Oh, that should get the adrenaline going for Brian Voss, two-time winner. He's hanging in there, Chris. Here's yes. the way to do it. Over the third arrow, shoot for the left side of the two-pin. Slide the two-pin over in the ten-pin area. Watch this shot. Perfect. Keep some pressure on Pete Weber. Voss collecting his thoughts. Has to make the adjustment. Remember, the left-hand lane hooks more than the right, so move to the left on the left lane, the golden rule of bowling, and if you're not coming up and missing the right, move to the right. That's what he has to do on the right lane. Leading the seven pin. Brian Voss, his only hobby is jogging. Works well. You got to have strong legs for this sport, Bo. You're right. Well, he got a lot of that from being in the Army, Chris. He was in the Army for four years. Mm -hmm. He was the All-Army Bowler in 1979 and 1980 and uh, learned to bowl in Anchorage, Alaska, where his daddy was a career man in the Army and owned a piece of a bowling center. Oh! Disbelief. Still managed to get a smile. The second time we've seen this, a ball hook in the left-hand channel. Remember, we said that the back ends of the lanes are very dry, and they didn't adjust to the shot. Here he is in the channel. He's wide open. And Don, Paula can bowl with Don any day. Believe me, she's a great lady bowler. Paula's won the Women's U.S. Open twice. Don, of course, four-time winner of the Men's U.S. Open. Here's Pete Weber, fourth frame, 35-pin lead, spare working. The only player who's been able to conquer this right-hand lane today. That's it, that's it. Right into the pocket. Well, let's diagnose the lane for our viewers. Okay, Chris, on the right hand, you'll see what we call the PBA lane condition. This whole area is heavy oil, and it's dry right in here. 
Now, on normal lead condition, you'll have normal oil in here, and it's carried farther down the lane to maybe the 35-foot mark. On the PDA, it only goes to the 12-foot mark. This oil carries down here in this zone, and it makes it very difficult for the players to handle the shot. All right. Set frame for Pete Weber. Slow down. And he tells himself to slow down. Wearing that wireless microphone as Dee Dee, his wife, looks on. Expected their second child in August. A little more incentive for Peter Weber. Pete up over 35,000 already. If he could win today, he would be 62,000 plus in the first month of the year. The 3, 6, 9, 10, the toughest spare on the tour for the players. You've got to guard against the chop and still carry out the back pin. Okay. Notice how carefully... He approached that shot. Good tip for the average bowler at home. Showing a lot of self-confidence, Chris. Hasn't he, though? Waiting for that ball. Voss has to get his game together. The advice I would give Brian Voss is just go for maximum power. Forget about accuracy. Everybody's getting buried trying to be accurate. Just cut it loose. All right, Brian Voss, likable. Talked to him earlier about his effort to market himself. Here's what he said. Well, uh, Kathy Schlegel, Ernie Schlegel's wife, uh, came up with an idea to try and market bowlers, and hopefully in the future it's not going to just concern me, but other bowlers. And uh, she put together a few photographs, and uh, uh, I find it kind of exciting. It's kind of added a little pressure to myself. Besides uh, my bowling game, I have to uh, kind of watch the foods I eat, uh, maintain my physical condition. But uh, it's exciting, and I think a lot of good things will happen from it. Well, the pinup left one pin on the left lane, <laughs> Brian Voss. And you can see by some of those photos the reason he uh, has coined the nickname Beefcake Voss out here. Good-looking, strong player. You'll see a lot of him. That way he, uh, he made sure the cat man. So now, back to the 5 foot 7 inch, 135 pounder from St. Louis, Pete Weber. And you can listen to the crowd in the background yelling, juice, juice, as he lets the ball go, just trying to cut it loose. Sounds like Bruce, Bruce, when they used to bring Suter in in St. Louis. I guess they'll, you'll hear it in Atlanta this coming year. He won his first match against Steve Wunderlich, 232 to 145. Six strikes, six in a row. Wunderlich won the first match, 191 to 173, as we have a re-rack here on the left lane, requested by the bowler. Three re-racks allowed in a championship game. That's the first for Pete Weber. Leads by 35, six frame. If he can double up here, he'll lead Brian Voss by 45 pins. Big shot. Really put the pressure on Voss. Dede giving a long, hard look at the five pin. Watch the line of Pete Weber. He's playing the ball between the second and third arrows where most of the players, because they don't have as much hook, are forced to play the extreme outside line. This is where his power comes in handy. There it goes. Pete Weber, who loves hockey but doesn't get on skates. I mention that because Wide World follows with the United States Ladies Figure Skating Championship plus World Women's Downhill Championship action. Looking at Brian Voss, who is trailing here by 35 pins in the semifinal match. More of it following this message. Brian Voss is trailing. By 35, and the seventh frame had a strike. Now with a re-rack on the left lane, he'll be shooting in the eighth frame, can cut the lead to 25 against Pete Weber. The winner to meet, Wayne Webb. The fingertip grip of Voss, important shot, Chris. Trails by 35, needs this strike to stay in the game. Three pens. 
just not to be. The players cannot get the combination on this championship here. The left-hand lane, they, when they start hitting the right-hand lane, as Voss did in the seventh frame, they lose the left lane. When they've hit the left lane, they lose the right lane. So there's only one man been able to conquer the pair so far. That's Pete Weber. And we could be heading toward a big confrontation, Weber and Webb. And they met at 83 at the Bird Bowl in the finals, and Webb defeated this young fellow from St. Louis. A little revenge, maybe. Pete Weber, that extremely long fingertip grip, and then the tremendous crank on the ball. Watch him on the right-hand lane. Boy, did he cut that loose. And boy, he is so smooth. What improvement over the last two or three years. Whew. Agreed. His physical conditioning, his mental conditioning are all much better. Plus, he's older and confident, Chris. And when you get that good ball reaction, then you can be confident. When he throws it a little wide like that shot and it comes back, you don't panic. When you throw it a little wide and it slides by for the 2A10, then you have real trouble maintaining your form. Well, old Slick back in St. Louis, his father, Dick, probably his chest is out to here, you know? Uh, knowing Dick, he's halfway to the bank already. Yeah. Well, it looks like it was going into the channel, and then all of a sudden into the pocket, and D.D. is happy. The crank, you can take it to the bank. He went <laughs> extremely wide, got it back. None of the other players can do that except maybe Webb in the championship match. Coming up high and laser looking, but the 3 six, 10 standing. Right now, Chris, the... Uh, normal type player, conventional type player like Wonderlich or we saw a boss. I don't think can compete with uh, Weber on this condition as we see in this match, but I think our tournament leader, he'll give him Weber all he can handle. Because our tournament leader has won 14 titles. And uh, he's hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour. We're having technical problems on today's live telecast of the 150,000 light beer classic from the Don Carter Kendall Lanes in Miami, Florida. ABC technicians are on the job trying to correct our problems, and we will continue when that is accomplished. We regret the inconvenience. We have backup audio now, and we will let you listen. We have lost uh, the video portion of our live telecast from southwest of Miami, Florida, but now both elements are back, and thanks to alert technical people, we are back on the air, and Pete Weber has won his second match, which means we have another showdown between Wayne Webb and Pete Weber. Boss shooting only a 171 will have Weber's final score after we return to Kendall Lane in Miami. Uh, it's the cash in the tournament, 209. That was the field average. And here are some of the other finishers. It's the cranker Steve Cook in uh, sixth place. Another power player in seventh. The guy who hooks the ball pretty good, Ballard. Eighth. Kessler moves that ball. There's another power player, tenth. Randy Johnson, watch him crank it up. There's a conventional type player, Zykes and Schlegel in there. Cranker Tom Milton, we saw him do well. Here's another down and inner. Rick Patone gave it a run. David Houston. Gary Skidmore, he's tough all the time. Powerful Marshall Holman. Robert Worrall. George Branham the third in there. There's a guy snuck in 22nd. Steve Martin, another power player from out of college. And our national champion, Bob Chamberlain, round out the top 24. Okay, Bo. Speaking of champions, well, the ladies' figure skating champions of the United States determined from Kansas City today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, 4 o'clock Eastern, along with action in the Women's World Downhill Ski Championship from Italy. And we're in Miami, Florida, 80 degrees outside. This should be a hot match inside between Pete Weber with two victories, 232, the Wonderlicks 148, and Weber's 216, the Brian Voss's 171. Here at Bird Bowl in Miami in eight, 1983, Pete Weber was defeated by Wayne Webb for the title. Webb finished last in that match. He's letting Pete Weber finish last in this match. Come on, Bob. And Pete said, come on, Bob. Dee 
Weber watching. And here now is your first look today. A 27-year-old Wayne Webb, originally from Rehoboth, Massachusetts, now bowling out of Indianapolis, Indiana, where he's a bowling proprietor, using very little of the approach. Did not come up, leaving the one, two, four, ten. Wayne, Wayne Webb, a power player, trying to saw that ball back to the pocket, but he just cannot make the ball make the turn he's using a very hard urethane ball and on this right hand lane could give him a lot of trouble no matter how much power he puts on the ball pete weber using the soft urethane ball is able to break the ball much sharper nobody has pressed pete weber yet today let's see what webb can do well, wayne webb happened to others here in our live telecast starting in the first frame with an open wayne webb short stocky and strong Watch the swing of Wayne Webb. He holds the ball right down low. Now watch his backswing as he brings it up a little bit lower than the Pete Weber. Look at he's right here. But there's the difference in the style of the two players. Wayne Webb is strong in the upper body and arms and legs. Can get that power by snapping it through. Weber uses his whole body. Wayne Webb, who was one of eight last year that won over $100,000, won our opening event in Anaheim, California. Was in a lot of TV finals which is tough to beat, especially here in the top spot. And Pete Weber now has worked his way through two matches, and um, he has a strike up. He'd like to double right now. And look at that graphic: 72nd place after 12 games. He made his big move in the third round, then charged to the top five in the sixth round last night in the last 42 games. <laughs> some of that too in order to win Chris watch his reaction now what has happened he's ripped a five out the head pin's gone to the sideboard it's rolling around the lane by ABC rules American Bowling Congress rules the machine has to wait four seconds before it can touch a pin it waited the complete four seconds as the head pin rolled around knocked the 10 out Weber <laughs> has a 22 pin lead can extend to 32 with another strike but what would you say those pins weigh Three pounds, seven ounces. Okay. They're getting a long run at it with that big hook ball. Oh, they are. Crossing over, and uh, he has left the sixth pin. But he's been consistent shooting spares thus far today. Pete Weber just out of time. You see the ball out in the proper position, but he's out of time. He doesn't have the stuff on it, and it's throwing, going too slow. Instead of going into this pocket, it breaks sharply, works over the left side of the head pin and he gets away with a 6-10 spare. After a double, marking with a spare. Had 12 strikes in his uh, two victories, six in each match. And now Wayne Webb, who had an open and then a strike. A double here can bring him within 10 pins of Weber. It's a big shot right here. Nobody has been able to conquer the right lane but Weber. Wayne Webb is open in the first frame. Let's see what he does here. He can cut Weber's lead down to just 10 pins. Big shot. The man who wears a lot of green, the green machine, but he said today, Bo, just for us, he was using an ABC blue ball matching our jackets, and I guess it does. It mirrors his power, Chris. He's not playing by mo moving and using finesse on the lanes. He's using power to overcome the lane. Instead of moving on the right-hand lane that time, he just put more turn and more hook on the ball. Two methods to conquer a lane. Make the move on the lane or overpower it. Here's to tie the match up. And look out from here. Gritting his teeth, giving his opponent a look like, here I come. So we are all the tournament leader. It is even. Fourth frame for Weber now. Spare working, the man that won two weeks ago in Las Vegas when he said, because of his mother's tears of joy, the Mississippi River had moved to Nevada. Never beaten Wayne Webb in a title game. Brooklyn. More than Brooklyn. <laughs> that was in the Bronx part. That one there, he left the one, three, six, nine. Completely lost it. I, it's unbelievable that he would miss that far after being around the pocket for almost one hour out here in the championship match. Shows you what the pressure will do. Remember, the man who wins this match 
has a chance to go on and win a million dollars in the Miller Lite Slam. Not again. Look at that. Hanging in there, Pete Weber. A million dollar slam. They've made victories in Cleveland and Milwaukee in, in order to make it a reality. So here's the 1985 leading money winner. Here's the bowler of the year. He's won the Firestone in 1980. Oh, he's tough. Wayne Webb. The psychology of match play. Pete Weber is more of a mild-mannered young man. He doesn't really look at his opponent, doesn't try to psych him too much. Wayne Webb's got his teeth out. He's glaring at young Weber, trying mm -hmm. to work him over. Reminds me of the veteran Harry Smith in his day. The Tiger was tough. <laughs> Well, here we go again, Bo. <laughs> One time I hit this lane. Looks my problem. Weber cuts right through the heart. The ball's right here, and the ball cuts right through, and he leaves these three pins, the three, six, nine, ten, much more difficult to make than just the three, six, and nine. Here's the problem right here. Carry all four pins and remain close in the match. Does it. And a sigh of relief. Fair shooter like his father, Dick Weber. Now, Wayne Webb. He has a three-bagger, shooting in the fifth frame, leading by eight. 27,000 to the winner, 14,000. To the man on the short end of the score. I hit, and it's a baby split. Well, these players are really struggling today. Going in this championship match, Chris, the player's averaging 188 as Wayne Webb picks up another ball to try to convert the 310. He cuts right through the heart. He's quickly up on the approach. If he misses here, it'll be the 13th open frame, the record being 19 a couple of years ago in the Quaker State. Well, we talked to Wayne earlier about the change in his attitude helping his game. Here's what he said. Well, I've been real easy going out here, and uh, I feel as if I've got a little lazy because of it. So I've changed my image. I'm a little bit more aggressive right now, a little bit more confident, and uh, it's working this week. Sliding by the pocket, leaving the 2-5. man whose hobbies are, I don't know whether it's in order, Gold, automobiles, and golfing. <laughs> well, his old nickname was the Green Machine with his change of attitude, Chris. Does that mean it's the uh, Mean <laughs> Machine now? Mean Machine, perhaps. Trails by six, needs to convert to two five, six frame. All right. Wayne Webb, who had a stiff neck on Tuesday, with some medical help, was able to loosen it up and get into the tournament and do well, took the lead after Brian Voss had held it in the fourth and fifth rounds. Tournament leader meeting Pete Weber. Webb with his first spare of the match, 50%. Uh, he missed in the first frame and has got one in the sixth. So, we'll have to uh, get some more expertise on the approaches on shooting spares, 2-8. Both great strike players, Weber and Webb, but right now it's coming down to the spares as you see Weber's ball slide by and leave the difficult 2-8 double wood. Needs to convert this to stay in the lead. Well, I remember what you told me years ago, reminding me about my game. You said if I shot nothing but spares, I'd still have a 190. So I think it's good advice. That's if you can get nine on the first you ball, Chris, but okay. I've watched you play Well, lot. you know I'd get nine on the Maybe first Maybe 170 ball. if you make all your spares. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him concentrate, that man. Wayne Webb is 27. This professional is 22. Four pin difference, four frames left. <laughs> Lucky to leave only the two. Very true. He's lost his rhythm. He got soft there in the middle of the match when Wayne Webb threw that turkey against him, and now he's trying to speed up to make the adjustment. He has just kind of lost that real confident rhythm he had in his first three, uh, first two matches. Going quickly to spare. Mm -hmm. Could he be? Um, could he be tired? Could it be a reflection of what happened in Las Vegas? 
Well, the showboat went down to the very last ball, and Pete Weber threw a double to win that match. It can go right down to that now. There's only three pins separate these players. Wayne Webb coming up in the seventh frame. It's a high hit, three, six, ten. Bowling is a condition-oriented sport, Chris, and all sports have their condition. But in this sport, I believe that the lane condition has more control over the player than in any other sport. It's it can control the player, and the player cannot completely control that lane condition. Right now, Webb needs to maintain his six-pin deficit with a spare. And Bo, as I like to point out, having done all the other sports, this is one sport, if you make an error, you never recover. Hit a bad shot in golf, you can come back with your second shot, a phenomenal thing, and still get your par. You can birdie it out of the woods, but yes. in bowling, once you uh, slip behind and make an errant shot, there's no way to recover especially in this heads-up action. It's the winner who makes the difference. The grip of Wayne Webb using that hard urethane ball, semi-fingertip grip. All but the 10. What a close match, 6-10. The lineup of Wayne Webb. He's trying to go straight down the line. He's using a hard ball to cut down his hook, but he should have taken a lesson from from Pete Weber. He's playing in that second and third arrow zone, but he needs a ball that hooks more to keep it keep it out of the nose and get it back. All right, coming down to the final frame, 7-10 lead by Pete Weber, who is back up, and they are shooting for $41,000. 27 to the winner, 14 to the runner-up. And that's a possibility, Chris. Both these players have the ability to win three tournaments of $1 million bonus. A lot riding on this match. Ricky Sajak won two. I believe he finished third in the other one. Right. Last year that Close. happened. But this year it's a million bucks if you can win all three. Ooh. Oh, now that was not Kennedy. That was socks in the pocket. Put the juice to it. Look at how light this ball is in the pocket. But here's that power coming into play. He drives that six pin into the sideboard and keeps it up into the ten. He knows you. Look at those eyes. Boy, you think he isn't aggressive. Now he puts a little bit on Webb. This is the biggest shot of the whole day coming up. Weber leads by seven and put Webb on the ropes with a strike. power. Weber went with maximum power. Wayne Webb, forget finessing that ball. Just cut it loose. You're a power player. You got to push Weber, and you need strikes right now. Trouble. Double three six. Wayne Webb, the best he can do, Chris, is a 198 game. Weber's going at a 207 game for the pace. So what Wayne Webb has to do, convert the three six and throw a double in the tenth. He'll force Weber to mark. Wayne Webb going against Pete Weber, leading money winner at over 35,000. Mike Albee second, 29.5, and Mike Durbin, 29.010, third. And Weber is third in averages behind Roth and Holman. Weber just about has it won, but it's not over yet. Right through the nose, Chris. Here's a power player trying to be a line player. He's trying to go down and in, and that just will not work on these lane conditions. You must hook the ball, overpower it. Weber's in the driving seat, driver's seat, but Chris, he had a half a dozen balls in the gutter this week, and remember that disastrous gutter ball he threw in, in uh, Las Vegas, so it's not over yet. Trying that stroking thumb and hand, looking away. Wayne Webb, 187 for Wayne Webb. Pete Weber, just keep the ball out of the channel, stay behind the foul line, hit the head pin. An easy task, $27,000. 
in his pocket. There's the winner. Five tournaments, he's won two. Over the $60,000 mark earned. And GD is out there to give him a big smacker. Steve Weber now wins the Life Series Classic here at Don Carter's General Plain. We'll be back. Got to do the more you need true value hardware stores. Take God what it takes. Buy Old Spice Stick Deodorant, 24 hours strong. And buy Firestone with over 4,000 retailers from coast to coast. Fine quality tires, master care service, and a complete line of batteries. If you choose your tools, it's championship match. 216 to 187. Steve Weber, 22 years old, winning his sixth title, the Life Bear Classic, now getting the trophy and a check for $27,000 from Mike Hart, Director of Marketing of the Miller Brewing Company. Stay tuned for a special two-hour edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Today's lineup includes the United States Figure Skating...